Welcome to Module 8 of our course. In this module, we'll focus on path traversal. A path traversal vulnerability occurs where a user may alter the parameters referred to a web application to determine which files could be loaded by the application. Let's take a look at a sample source code illustrating the vulnerability. You can see here a simple website created in PHP. The contents of the subpage are loaded from a file stored outside the web root directory. As we can see, get is used to pass the name of the file which will be displayed. The file get contents function retrieves the content of the file but doesn't parse it. Notice that an attacker is able to freely manipulate the name of the file which will be displayed by the application. We can see here a website which is working normally. The address bar contains the variable site, which is used to specify a loaded file. Let's see what will happen if we submit the index.php file as a parameter. Take a look at the source code of the page. We can see here the source code of index.php. This is extremely dangerous, since an intruder may use the information to find other code vulnerabilities, or display configuration files that contain critical data like passwords to databases, mail servers, or FTP. Let's try to think of other ways in which an attacker could exploit this vulnerability. Insert the name of a non-existing file. The returned error information contains the full path to the page file. This is an example of a path disclosure vulnerability, which was discussed earlier. We also know that the web server of the site is Apache in the XAMPP framework. This helps us guess the location of the PHP INI. The string dot slash passed at the beginning to the file get contents function in theory restricts the access to the current directory. In practice, by using standard special directories dot dot, you may be able to navigate to parent directories. In this case, we'll climb five directories up. As you can see, the contents of PHP any have been displayed. Using this method, you can access virtually all files stored in the web server, provided that their location is known and they may be accessed by a PHP interpreter. This is an extremely serious attack, which could lead to the disclosure and leaking of critical information concerning the server or the web application itself. Let's see how we can protect ourselves. Whitelisting consists of creating a list of files which can be accessed by a script and comparing the file selected by a user against the list. Another form of whitelisting is specifying the characters expected to be present in the inputted file name. If a user provided parameter doesn't conform to the specifications of the whitelist, the file will not be read. Unfortunately, this solution is either impossible to implement or simply impractical. As you can see, in this case, an attacker even has control over the file extension. Let's try to predefine the extension. We'll modify the existing instances. After a restart, we can see that the extension has been added permanently to the end of the string passed to the file get contents function and may not be manipulated by potential attackers. In PHP editions older than 5.5.3, it was possible to pass the end of string marker percent %00, which was included without validation in the string passed to file gets contents. 
This enabled an attacker to delete the added extension. The problem has been solved in newer versions of PHP. In a word, it's important to employ protection mechanisms to prevent hackers from reading restricted directories, even if we assume that the files with allowed extensions won't contain critical data. Filtering out the dot and dot slash characters may also be useful. Let's now try to implement this mechanism. The function will delete the dot and slash characters. Let's see if this is enough as a security measure. As you can see, all dot and slash characters have been deleted, which certainly makes it harder for potential hackers to attack our application. Remember that there's always a risk present if users are able to modify application parameters to change the name of the processed file. That's why all input parameters must be treated with extra caution and be properly filtered. That's all for Module 8. Thanks for your attention, and see you in the next part of the course.